Therefore, God has, he chose to make it so that when you see that thing, you will know that God has a responsibility and a duty towards you. Hallelujah. It's a covenant. Mm -hmm. He could have done away with it, but he would choose to make it sound. One of the earliest covenants that we can recognize, remember, whenever there is a covenant, there is always a sign. And that sign is to remind you, there are many reasons why that sign is there. It is to remind you that God is with you, and we apply some of them with us. But there is a duty, a very good one that everyone today can remember, is the sign of the rainbow. Amen? Amen. The sign, how many of you know what a rainbow is? How many colors are there in a rainbow? Seven. Seven colors. Amen? Amen. Is it seven or eight? Seven. Seven. How many of you can say it? Number one. Red. 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 Orange. 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 Green. Yellow. Green. 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 Blue. Blue. Indigo. Indigo. And violet. I don't forget this. I learned it with my junior science class. Roy Beef. If you want to remember the colors in the rainbow. Hallelujah. So you see, you can't forget it. Um, is it seven or eight? Seven. Seven. And you realize that these are the perfect number of God. They are to bless you. So the first covenant that God made was the covenant he made. That is the one we noticed. Remember, people have traced back to say that it's the Adamic covenant. Where God made a covenant with Adam. But one of the ones that God made clear that called it covenant is with Noah. When he says that he will no longer use flood to destroy this world. Hallelujah. He will not do what? Use flood to destroy this world. And there's a sign he will put a rainbow. And that is why you see, no matter the way that all the Katrinas, all the floods, all the things that will come out to want to cause a deluge, God will restrain them. Because his word will never fail. Mm -hmm. It is impossible for flood to cover the whole earth. Because God has said it. Mm -hmm. It is covenant. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we have the number one type of covenant. Remember, there's a responsibility. God has a duty. So whenever you see any of those things happening, you will remember some of those signs are there to show us that God is there to reveal that his covenant will never change. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So the other party, we're a junior party. God is the senior party. And God assumes a very strong promise. Let us turn our Bible quickly to Jeremiah 31. <coughs> Jeremiah chapter 31. I read from verse 33. So quickly I've established that the foremost type of covenant is the covenant between God and mankind. That is the major covenant. If somebody like Bill Gates in the human nature will come to you and say he wants to make a covenant with you and you don't have all the millions he has and he says to you, I want to make this covenant. I just want to give you these millions. It is my, it is, I will do it. I will train all your children. I will establish you. I will build mansions for you. I will do this. I will, you can imagine what will happen, isn't it? Uh -huh. But this is the eternal God himself. Yes. The God almighty, creator of the universe. Amen. The one that has the power of life and death. Yes. He has chosen to come and do a covenant with you. Mm. And he says, he will be your God. Amen. Amen. That is why we say to people, in this religion that makes people think that they are the one that will find God. People have tried and are still trying today to find a way of reaching to God. But they can't. So out of the covenant relationship, God decides to come down. That is why he said, I will. I will do this. I will be. Because he knows on our own we cannot 
find him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, is there anybody here yes. that found God yourself? No. Then God found you. Hallelujah. The Bible states that while we were yet lost in sin, he sent his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would go and die on the cross for our sins. That we, hey, I love that scripture. We who we are once no people will become not just an ordinary people, a peculiar people. Hallelujah! A special people will become a royal priesthood of God. Can you imagine that? He says he's called us out of darkness into his world, marvelous life. First Peter chapter 2, I believe verse 9. That is what God wants to do with you. It is him. So if you've been the one trying, I want to try to serve God. God is saying to you, because of the covenant relationship, he is the one coming to you. Yes. Amen. He's the one coming to you. The one coming to me. That the reason you've not been able to do it is because you've been trying to seek it. Just say, Father God, I give up and I want you to come into my heart. He says, no longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother say, you know the Lord. Because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. And he states out for I, who is doing this to you, Jesus Christ. God Almighty, for I will forgive their wickedness. Mm. And I mean, somebody is here that you, when you remember some of the things that has happened in your life, you think you cannot be forgiven. Who says so to you? God says, I, God, will forgive your wickedness. Man may not forgive you, but I, God, will forgive you. People may not forgive you. Even sometimes, you yourself may not be able to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Why don't you say, God, I want to take your forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Shout hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. I will forgive your wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. Verse 35. This is what the Lord says. He who appoints the sun to shine by the day. Who decrees the moon and the stars to shine by the night. So that, <laughs> who stirs up the seas so that its waves roar. You see, that's why I love the word of God. It is written in the Bible even before the scientists discovered it. Do you know what causes the wave in the sea? It is the moon, the position of the moon that causes the wave in the sea. And here already, the Bible has written it, it is him that stands on the sea so that its waves will roar. Why? Because it's him who decrees the moon and the stars. So you see, because of the position of the moons and the stars that God has made, we're already able to have the waves go up and down. It's amazing what is revealed in the Bible, even before scientists will know. Scientists so many years ago believed that the world is what? Flat. That the world is very flat. That someday you can be walking and you come to the end of the world and suddenly you will drop off. But already the Bible has said you cannot search out the end of the world. So people can go on and on and on. They will come to, if you stand here in a, in a straight line, look at this. If you are to walk in a straight line, don't turn left or right. Just continue straight line. You are not going until, let's say you have the means like the scientists do to continue in a straight line. You are not going to drop off somewhere out of the earth. Rather, you will end up from where you started. Because the world is what? Round. And it's fair. Put your hands together for Jesus. It is him that can reveal. And the Bible says, this is the God that is making covenant with you. Yes. And that really is making this kind of covenant with you. Who is it that will disannul that covenant? No one. Nobody. So I want you, child of God, that after today, you will leave this place knowing that you have a covenant 
with a mighty God. Hallelujah. If you are not entered into it, it's your opportunity to enter into that covenant in the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever covenant that has been there in the old times is only pointing to the covenant that is to come. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's only pointing to the covenant that is to come. So verse 36, only if this decree vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will the descendants of Israel ever cease to be a nation before me. Mm. That this is the decree that God made many years. Have you seen how many times people have tried to wipe out the Israelites? Hitler had tried to wipe them out. Even before Hitler, many nations in the past, including Egypt, including the Amalekites, including the Syrians and the Assyrians, including all the nations that the Bible has mentioned, wanted to wipe them out. But this is the word of God. That except he, God Almighty, that this decree he is making will cease from his own sight. Only if this decree vanish from my sight, declares the Lord, will the descendants of Israel ever cease to be a nation before me. Hmm. That was the time they were no nation. Then suddenly they became a nation. Mm -hmm. Now that is what God is saying. You as a child of God, you are a spiritual Israelite. Hallelujah. <laughs> you didn't get what I'm saying. Yes, sir. You know why? Because the Abrahamic covenant, God made a covenant with Abraham that is not only for his children in the flesh, the Hebrew, but also for his spiritual children. And that spiritual children, when the Bible talks, we are going to read it in Galatians. When he speaks, he said he made a covenant with Abraham about his seed. Seed, one person, not seeds. And that seed is the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result, every person that comes into agreement and aligns up with Jesus, you become a member of the commonwealth of Israel. Oh, John, Brethren, I'm just trying to let you know by the Spirit and the grace of God yes. who you are mm. in Jesus. Amen. In God. Hallelujah. That even if they try to give you the word, you will say no. Mm. So this is so. If, if anything wants to shake you, you will remember you have a covenant with God. And that covenant has not ceased or vanished from the decree of God. Mm -hmm. All the Bible says, it says, let the rain, as the rain comes down and waters the earth, that it will burn and bring forth fruit. That is how the word that has gone out of my mouth will ever bring forth increase. Mm -hmm. It shall not return to me void. Oh. It is because of his covenant. Uh -huh. Yes. It is the curse of his covenant. So, saints of God, don't you look around at what is happening around you. Don't you look around at the challenges of your life. Don't you look around at the difficulties of your family. Amen. Focus upon God. Amen. He has said something, he will not change it. Yes. Death has no power more than At all. God. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people make a covenant of death. Mm. Somebody turn to Isaiah chapter 28, verse 18. Some people make a covenant of death. They enter into satanic covenant, soulish covenant. But what did the Bible say? If you are there, read that for me, please. Isaiah 28, verse 18. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And your covenant with death shall be a disannulled. And your covenant with death shall be what? Disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. And your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Then you shall be trodden down. You shall be trodden down. Now you see, there are many people that made agreement with death. Believing that that is what is going to save them. I read the story of a great millionaire that entered into a great of all court societies. And he made the wealth. It is published on paper. I can't remember his name. But at a point came, the enemy came to take his life. <coughs> and he was, he has done everything that he says he will give up all his wealth to anybody that will save him from that agreement with Satan. Mm. 
But you see, because it is not what money can buy. If he had lifted up his voice and said, I am a wretched man with all my wealth. I am dying. I need somebody to deliver me. I cannot buy it with money. Salvation would have come to him. But because he thought he can equate it with his wealth, the enemy can be sealing his heart. But what I'm trying to say to somebody here is the power of life is greater than the power of death. Amen. Amen. And because of you, the power of life over your head has canceled Amen. every degree of death. In the name of Jesus. It doesn't matter where they are coming. Yes. Because Jesus lives, yes. you can face your tomorrow. Hallelujah. So because Messiah lives, you can face your tomorrow. Amen. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. Because of your covenant relationship with God, you can face your tomorrow. So buy this in your mind. So God made it so clear that the children of Israel said the days are coming when this city will be rebuilt from beginning from Hananel to the corner gate and it goes on to establish. The city will no, no longer again be uprooted or be demolished. That is God's decree. So the first covenant the Hebrews made was when the Lord chose Abraham and his people. And you see, when he chose Abraham and his people, he remember I've talked about the Noahic covenant. He sealed it with what? Rainbow. Rainbow. Now he did another one with the Hebrews in the place of Abraham, and he sealed it with what? Circumcision. And that is why every male ought to be circumcised according to the Hebrew teaching. We practice it and it is good. Even the doctor says for health reason that more of the people who have um, the cancer, what is this cancer that attack male in their private? There's a particular type of cancer. Oh. Post-threat cancer, yes. Now most of the people that suffer from prostate cancer, most of them did not circumcise. So you see, even if when God is doing something, there has even other benefits that we may not know. So he said to Abraham, circumcise yourself, circumcise your children, circumcise even servants in your house. And after today, anyone that comes into your household, have them circumcised. So you see, each time they see, they remember the agreement that God made with Abraham. And so for us as children of God today, it may not be the physical circumcision, even though it has its place, but it's the circumcision of the heart. Hallelujah. Whereby the Lord Jesus Christ has redeemed us and we have been washed and cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. And our heart had been washed. That is why he says in, in, in the same Bible of Ezekiel chapter 36, let us just turn there quickly. In Ezekiel chapter 36, he says, Then will I, from verse 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from your filthiness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. This is God speaking. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. <laughs> a new heart. Oh, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. A new heart also will I give you. A new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will also save you from all your cleanliness, and I will call you for the corn, and I will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. But thirty, and I will multiply, oh God, the fruit yes. of the tree and the increase of the field. Amen. 
that you shall receive no more reproach Hallelujah. of famine among the people. Amen. Or receive any reproach of famine among the hidden. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So, saints of God, this is the promise of God. Now, let us connect it quickly with Galatians chapter 3. He says the first covenant was with the Hebrews. But this is now extended to that of the new covenant. After Abraham's covenant, we enter into other forms of covenant. Even the covenant of Moses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At where? At where? At Sinai. Mount Sinai. I believe you all are Bible students. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Shout glory to God. Glory to God. So when Moses received the law at Sinai, God gave them a sign. And the sign, one of the signs was the Sabbath. He gave them the law. That, and the law was part of of the thing that when the children of Israel remember it, they will remember the covenant of God. It comes with a command and instruction. And the Sabbath is part of it. Remember, Sabbath is actually the Saturday. But that is of the old covenant. There is the new covenant in Jesus where we have the Lord's Sabbath. And the Lord's Sabbath is the Sunday. The Lord's day. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So we are not keeping the old Sabbath law. We are keeping the new Lord Jesus Christ Sabbath. Hallelujah. Which is the greater one than anyone that has ever existed. Yes. Yes. And that is why he says the law is not made for man. I mean man is not made for the law, but the law for man. Mm -hmm. And he came to fulfill everything. So that is why if you come to church on a Sunday, you are remembering the covenant of Christ in the new covenant that he has given us. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So yeah. have that in mind. And he made a covenant with David. I just want to run through this so that we can tidy up. He made a covenant with David as well. It is the covenant of the kingship. He said to David, kings will not depart from between your legs. You would always produce kings. Mm. And that is why the Lord Jesus Christ will also return to earth. And when he returns, he is going to rule in the dynasty of David. Amen. And that is why he had to come from the loin of David. So that he can fulfill the laws of God. So that is the Davidic covenant. And out of that now, we come to quickly the covenant, which is the new covenant. Remember, God sealed the David's covenant with the dynasty, the kingship. And you can apply it to us in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. We remember what I said to us, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we are now of the priesthood. So, Bible states that God has made unto us a kingdom of priests and kings. Everyone who is a child of God, you are a priest. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are a saint. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I was to be a Roman Catholic priest. And one of the things we are taught, our people are taught in the seminary those days, is that you have to get to a particular level before, even after you have died. Then they'll call a meeting of the synod to determine whether you can be made a saint. No. Saint simply means you've been justified. Mm. You've been bought over by the righteousness of Christ. Mm. It is not by what you do or what you did not do, but it is the gift of God. Hallelujah. All we need to do is to receive it by faith. I say, Christ, I receive it. That is why Galatians, I mean Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says it is not of works. Amen? Mm -hmm. Least anyone should do what? Works. It is by what? By grace. By grace. Through what? Faith. Yes. In who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Unto what? Good works. So it is now when you first of all receive it by grace, through faith, believing and trusting that God has called you his child. And he said, Jesus, today, I am surrendering my life to you. And then you believe it. 
It has come by faith. It is in Christ, not in church, not in religion, not in mother or father, not in tribe, not in our ancestry, not in any other thing, but in Christ. And then we are to leave this side of him. And God will not quicken us to leave and produce good works. There were times I tried on my own strength so many years ago to be a good Christian. The more I tried, the more I failed. The Sunday I would go to church, and that Sunday I would be, I would take communion, I would be like a, I would leave that place very holy. Very holy. But on Monday, I would try. No, I was in church on Sunday. So let me hold myself back. Tuesday, I would try. Oh boy. By Wednesday, I've gone back to my saints. What's that? I did. I was trying. There were times I would come and cry at the altar and say, God, forgive me, forgive me. But because I was trying to do it by my human effort. But when Jesus came in, when I heard his word, like I'm, you might be hearing it today, I said, God, I quit from my human effort. I want to receive this new covenant. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. And immediately, Jesus comes. That is the experience of many people today. And he put a seal. Remember, every covenant has a seal. The seal that he put in us as Christians is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit of yes. God. Amen. It's invisible, you cannot see him. But he lives inside of you. Yes. He empowers you. He gives you grace to continue in him in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, saints of God, at the red, God says we give us a new heart. Because of the new covenant that we have in him, these are all the promises of God that is given to us. So, I want to just conclude with this. Know that God has called us out right now to be able to go and live a new life in him. A new life that will not cause us to dwell in any other way than this way that Christ has ordained for us. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. We are going to pray. But before we do this prayer, I just want to outline a few things to you so that you'll be able to know that this covenant relationship differentiates you from the unbeliever. Differentiates you from people that don't serve God. Differentiates you from people who are under failure all the days of their lives. It is number one, the type of covenant we are talking about is a covenant that makes sure that you are near to God, number one. You are near to God. The Bible says that God is near to us. Religion has made it seem as though God is in heaven. Who can come down to earth? Turn your Bible quickly to Romans chapter 10. You realize that it is a covenant of nearness to God. Romans chapter 10. It is not a covenant where you are far from God. Don't think that God, I tell people, God, listen, everyone look at me, look at me, look at me. I say to you that God is closest to you than even your skin. Mm -hmm. He's closest to you than your skin. Because when you have the Holy Spirit, he's inside of you. Are you in Romans chapter 10? Yes. Let's look at verse 8 and verse 9. Verse 8 and 9. Okay, no, Romans chapter 10, that's correct, verse 8 and 9. But before we read verse 8 and 9, let us see verse 6. For the righteousness which is of faith, you see, we have also repeated, it is by faith, by trusting in God, speaks in this wise. Do not say in your heart, who shall ascend unto heaven, that is to bring Christ down from heaven, don't say God is far away because number one has said to us it is the covenant of nearness to God. Believe that God is near to you. Sometimes people will feel that oh my prayer cannot go beyond the ceiling. 
I said to you, God is also under your ceiling. Uh -huh. Oh, child. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes. If you are wondering, my prayer cannot pass the ceiling. I declare to you, God is also under the ceiling where you are. Amen. He is right there. I remember the story of Hagar, who was weeping in the wilderness. Tears clouded her eyes. She was weeping because her son, Issachar, or maybe what's her name? Ishmael, sorry was about to die. I know to her that God has created water near. Tears clouded her eyes until God said, look, there is an oasis there. Oasis. So brethren, it is number one, a covenant of nearness to God. And that is why he says that, do not say who will go to heaven to bring Christ down. Or who shall be sent into the deep as if Jesus is still in the grave? That is to bring Christ again from the dead. Verse 8. But what says it? The word is near you, even in your mouth, even in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart we believe unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, for the scripture says, Whosoever believes in him shall not be what? Ashamed. I declare, because of the covenant, you shall not be put to shame. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. So brethren, is a covenant of nearness to God. That is why he states in Psalm 73, verse 27 to 28, those who are afar from you will perish. You will destroy all who are faithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near to God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. It is good to be near. How? As you have come to God in faith, you remain with the people of God. You worship God all your life. You confess Him with your mouth. Exodus 33, verse 13 to 14. If you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so that I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, my presence will go with you Amen. and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is God's assurance to you. Moses was crying to God, said, listen, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Have the assurance of the peace of God. Psalm 68, verse 8. The earth shook, the heavens poured down rain before God, the one of Sinai, before God, the God of Israel. Let us come before him. Psalm 95, verse 2. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol his name with music and song. Like we come before him and worship God with music and song. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So when you come, don't feel strange. Do not fall from dancing that he wants. In this house, we dance disco. Uh -huh. Come on, in this now. house, we dance reggae. Uh -huh. In this house, we dance classical. Uh -huh. In this house, we dance what well, in Africa they call high life. <laughs> and what? Glory ah. be to God. Feelings with dance and music. Amen. God wants you to rejoice. Uh -huh. When you are in the house of God, you are in the covenant of feasting. Uh -huh. It is the no longer the covenant of mourning. I don't know why those days they taught us when you are taking communion, you look so bereaved and so grieved. No. You are coming to have communion. Maybe next Sunday we'll have a communion. As you come with joy, because Jesus' blood has washed you. Amen. He doesn't want you to stay away. Some people, when we talk about communion, they say, I'm a sinner. I cannot take communion. No. You are supposed to say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. Today, bless me. So that I will remain in communion with you. Amen. Tell somebody, it's a covenant of nearness with God. It's a covenant of nearness to God. It is not a covenant of being far from God. It's not a covenant of being far from God. Oh, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. to you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord keep you. Amen. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you. Amen. And the Lord himself shall be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord will turn his face towards you. Amen. And the Lord will give you peace. Amen. Hallelujah. Because
because you have come near to him. Hallelujah. You have come near to him. Yes. Bow your head. Next Sunday, we go to the other part of the covenant. Amen. Why don't you thank God as we all bow our head today? Amen. 